Welcome back everybody to the New Wave Cooking Club. I'm Chef David here in the New Wave Test Kitchen. Today we're gonna to do two really cool dishes and combine them. We're gonna make a couscous, a Mediterranean style, really healthy in our forged copper pan and on our PIC. And then we're gonna pan roast some beautiful Atlantic salmon with a crispy skin. And then we're gonna serve them together. So we'll get started. And I think what we'll do is we'll get the couscous going first. So what I'm gonna do is set my PIC on high and get that guy going. And what I like to do with couscous is, some people use butter in it, but I like to use olive oil. It's healthier. And also the other thing I like with my couscous is I like to add vegetables. It gives it texture, crunch, and brings another level of health to the dish. So I've already started cutting some peppers. So we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna finish cutting our peppers. I'm gonna peel and cut some beautiful organic carrots. We're gonna peel a shallot, which is really neat thing if you haven't seen. It's uh, in the allium family, so it is part of the onion family. Uh, it's much smaller than an onion and much sweeter. Uh, it's used all over the world. Uh, it's very common in Chinese cooking, but very popular in Europe and France and Italy. All right, so we'll get started with the shallot. And we're just gonna trim the ends. And I think you already know this, all this stuff goes right in my compost. We don't waste any of it. Okay, because all this stuff is gonna bring back some, some goodness to your soil. So just peel off to the outer layer. It comes off. And then I'm gonna show you how to finally slice this now in the restaurants that I've worked in over the years, we've always cut them very small into something in the industry we call a brunoise, which is the smallest uh, size dice that you can do. And again, here we go, compost. Usually a shallot, here's the tricky part, almost always has two distinct bulbs in it. Makes slicing it kind of confusing. So what I do just for ease, always pop them off together and then we'll slice one, we'll slice the other. And just thinly slice them down. They don't have to be perfect because we're gonna melt them up in some good olive oil in a nice hot, one of our copper forged pans here. And I like this because of the Dorlon coating on these now, I'm not worried about dry heating it. So in the industry, we call this dry heating, where we put the pan on the flame in our kitchen or on the induction top to get it preheated. Some of the old nonstick coatings over the years, they found that when you dry heat them can be very dangerous. So ours doesn't have that problem. All right, so we just chop these up nice and fine. And what we're gonna do is get these started in the pan. We get a little brownie action. I'm gonna to touch them with a little bit of olive oil. It's about a tablespoon. Now, if you've seen some of the previous videos that I've done, I very rarely start my saute of vegetables with salt. The reason is simple, the salt draws out the moisture. Moisture hits the oil, it creates steam. And that's not what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for a little bit of sugary brownness, some caramelization. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some peppers. So there's a couple of different ways you can cut peppers. Some people just whack them in half. I like to trim off the sides like this, because this gives me a little more control in the, the size that I'm cutting. Then I take the bottom, that comes down, and the rest of this either goes to your chickens like I do, or they go in your compost. And we can do a couple things here. We can take our knife and trim out this vein. And the vein is, in the really spicy peppers, that's where you're gonna find most of your heat in the veins. And all the rest of this will go compost. And the reason I like to do this, it just makes for a nicer finished product. You certainly don't have to do it, but it does help. And then again, we're just gonna, a lot of shallots smell good already, look at that. Can you see this, guys? That's the, that's the heat of the, the PIC, the science behind that. That's why chefs are falling in love with these all over the country. So you see, we're already starting to get a little bit of color in here, and that's exactly what I want. And again, that's why there's no salt in there at this time. We'll get salt in there a little later. All right, again, we're gonna do a simple julienne. We'll cut them into strips, and then I turn them, and this is how I'm gonna make my small dice, just like that. And again, this is a rustic dish. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just has to be fun and healthy. That's all we need. All right? And again, just a nice julienne. Cut them into your dice. And the peppers, believe it or not, are gonna give off an amazing amount of sweetness to this dish. Because we're gonna finish it with some fresh thyme. And I'm gonna show you a little garlic trick that I like to use in the restaurants I've worked in. So again, I've got my nice color on these shallots. That's from the heat of this. And I don't even have it on maximum. I only have it on high. 
and I'm already getting a beautiful sear. So now we can go to the peppers. And these are gonna soften up. They're gonna give us some color, but also they're gonna give us a tremendous amount of sweetness, which I really enjoy in this dish. There's a trick you don't see often. I can put that right on the flame. It doesn't melt. Only the metal to the magnet is what generates heat. Compost. Now, carrot, organic carrots, simple to trim. You're gonna notice the organic ones, a little more uh, distinctive in their look. They're a little almost ugly, uh, but they're grown with no chemicals, no pesticides, none of that stuff. Uh, and I just simply use a Swiss peeler and I just trim them down lightly. Uh, quite often at home, the carrots that we grow, I scrub them really well and I leave the skin on. But even though these came from the local farmer's market, I still peel them because that's going to make sure that anything that's on the outside doesn't go on my inside. All these beautiful, beautiful food for animals and great for compost. So look, very simply, guys, can you hear that? Look at this. See the color we're getting in here? I know you can't smell it, but we're really getting a really fragrant, sweet onion smell from that, which is amazing. All right, carrots. Let's cut them into a couple of logs like this, right? Now, here's the trick with carrots. They roll, the knife is sharp. That's not uh, safe. So I trim a little bit off very carefully, just like that. This way the carrot's flat. I'm going to cut some planks, basically. And then from the planks, I'm going to cut the boards. And from the boards, I'm going to cut my little squares. So let's get started. So one plank, two, three. Careful towards the end because it can fall. And you know what? In the eyes of making it perfect versus safety, choose safety. Doesn't have to be perfect. Good friends and family around this table and a bottle of wine, and they're not going to worry if your carrots were cut perfectly. So that's my planks. Now I cut my boards. This, by the way, is how I taught my son to cut vegetables with planks and boards. And then now we cut the small dice. Now this is going to give us not only a little texture, but it's going to play to the little trick that we're going to add to our couscous. And the trick is going to be an amazing spice called turmeric. I'm sure you guys hear about turmeric all the time because of uh, its health benefits. It's anti-inflammatory. They sell it in pills for your joints, etc. cetera, uh, all that stuff, which is wonderful. Uh, but you have to understand one thing about turmeric one, buy it reputable source so it's, it's in good condition. Buy it as fresh as you can. Uh, even the dried one, you, you should have a date on the jar. Don't buy old ones and don't use one that's been sitting around for a while. And the most important thing to know about turmeric, if you want to get those benefits from the turmeric, you have to include fresh pepper. And I won't get into too much science here, but the turmeric, which is anti-inflammatory chemical in the turmeric, only gets activated when it hits piperin. Piperin is the chemical inside peppercorns, okay? So that's simple. So we're going to do now, I'm going to check the olive oil because I didn't use a lot to begin with because I don't want this dish oily. I mean, this is beautiful. Look at this, guys. We're getting a nice caramelization on the onions. See that right here? Beautiful color and smell. Now the carrots are in. The carrots I'm putting in towards the end. Most recipes tell you put the carrots in first so they cook and they're the same texture as the other ones. But for this dish, I'm going the other way because I want to put the carrots in later so they retain the crunch and give texture to this dish, okay? So very simple. So now, in goes the turmeric. Very simple. In goes the black pepper, a good amount of black pepper. Not only for flavor, but will activate anti-inflammatory in the turmeric. Okay, that right there. Now the trick, other trick with turmeric is when you're working with it, it leaves uh, everything yellow, even your fingers. So use spoons or a pair of gloves and you'll be fine. So at this point, another half a teaspoon of good extra virgin olive oil. And then, here's the simple part. And you can make this recipe without any vegetables. Just the couscous in the water. Once you finish it, a little salt, a little olive oil is perfect. I like this dish with this amazing amount of really fragrant vegetables. So here's couscous, two cups. The water measurement is two cups, to, is one cup to one and a quarter. So this is two cups couscous to two and a half cups of water. That's the ratio, and in kitchens nowadays, we do a lot of cooking with ratios. It's a lot faster than trying to come up with a recipe. So when we say, hey, how do you cook the couscous? One to one and a quarter, and the cooks all know. And then in goes the water, it's that simple, guys. 
I give it a nice stir. There's different types of the couscous on there. Also, look, you can see that turmeric just turned this the most amazing shade of yellow. Now, here's the other trick with this. This does not have to cook long. Lid goes on. I'm going to drop the heat on the PIC because we have that amazing temperature control you guys all love. Put it on 375 for a few minutes. I'm going to take it off the heat and just leave it covered and it'll finish cooking. Most couscous on the market today is marketed as fast cooking or quick cooking and it should cook in about five minutes. And that's pretty much most of the ones that you'll find on the market. It's not hard to find. Uh, so as soon as we come back, we're going to go to the other side of this dish, which is an incredible Atlantic salmon served with crispy skin. We're going to pair that with this amazing Mediterranean style couscous. Welcome back everybody. Chef David here at the New Wave Cooking Club. We're going to finish now our incredible dish, the crispy skin salmon with our Mediterranean couscous. Now on the couscous side, I've already dropped the temperature down to low, which is about 100 degrees on our PIC, perfectly controlled temperature, but I want you to see what I have in here. This is amazing. So two things you need to know about finishing couscous is when it's done, all the water has been absorbed. Instead of just plopping it out, we're going to do something in French they call égrainer, which is make the grains. So we're going to scrape it a little bit like this so the couscous is fluffy. All right, and we'll do that to finish our dish. All right, so now to the salmon. Atlantic, beautiful farm-raised salmon. I normally buy a big piece that you've seen me cut. Uh, today, we went over to the local organic market and uh, we got some really good quality fish. And I bought them already portioned. These are seven, seven ounce portions, uh, which I think is more than enough uh, for your average uh, adult. Uh, for the children, I take the bigger ones and I cut them in half. Uh, a couple things to know about the salmon. Even when you're buying whole fish, it's easy to tell if the fish is fresh. The eyes are, are glistening, the gills are bright red, uh, but it's hard to tell that with salmon that's already been cut or any fish that's already been cut. Number one way to tell it is the smell. This one smells like the ocean, which is really good. And the other way to tell is the skin. First of all, it should not be sticky. It should not be overly wet and it should not be sticky. Secondly, when you push on the skin, the skin should bounce back. If it leaves an indentation, that's old fish, give it back to the fishmonger, tell them to try again. Uh, so I'm gonna do something real simple here. I'm actually just gonna trim these. I'm gonna set my PIC onto high and get that going. I'm just gonna brown these off in a little olive oil. I'm gonna get the skin crispy. The skin full of vitamins and minerals. And we're one of the few cultures in the world that really doesn't eat fish skin. But all over the world, all over the Caribbean, you go fish skin, incredibly popular for the simple reason, it's healthy, okay? So we have two pieces here. We basically have the loin and we have the belly, okay? In Japanese restaurants, if you're a sushi fan, you'll know the difference. But what I like to do, because these are gonna obviously cook at different times, because this is thicker, one of the things we can do, and we do often in the restaurants I've been in, is we take the belly off. And what we'll do is, we'll come up with a secondary dish for that, right? So here's the belly. The belly also has an amazing amount of fat, which is why it's so popular in sushi, right? Fat we know is flavor, and that goes certainly for the salmon. So now, with these right here, I'm gonna show you one more trick. When you start your salmon in a pan, the skin can curl up, it looks terrible. One of the ways you combat that is just kinda give it a little circle squeeze to your salmon, and with a sharp knife, being careful, just cut these little tranches or little slices right into the skin. All right, and this will help not only absorb some of the seasoning and the oil, but it's also gonna keep it from curling. So you'll see how we do this right here. All right, just like that. Okay, now again, I'm not gonna start with oil. Uh, I'm not gonna start with salt. We are gonna start with oil. The reason I don't start with the salt is again, pulls out moisture, creates steam. What I'm looking for is something crispy. Pan on amazing PIC, already hot. I love that thing always, especially my kid, the safety. As soon as you take it off, this thing turns off. All right, you put it back and it'll return, otherwise just hit start. So this doesn't have to be incredibly hot. If it's too hot, the skin will seize up and shrink. So we have it on a good size heat right now. These are gonna go in. They're gonna take about four and a half minutes per side. So as soon as that skin is crispy, I'm gonna turn them over. The other trick is very simple. If you're uh, running out of time here a little bit, you can get these in a hot oven, 375 for about six to eight minutes. So just move around a little bit in your pan. You can see our door line here doesn't really stick to anything. And the reason I do that is I wanna coat the fish with the fat and make sure that as this is coming up to temperature, the skin starts firming out. Otherwise the skin will curl if it gets hot too fast. And that's why I didn't specifically on this one use the sear button, right? So we got that going and now we have the belly pieces 
And uh, I'll show you something we normally do is one, I batter these and I fry them skin on. They're amazing for a little fish fry. The other thing I like to do with these is I like to take the skin off and I like to dice these up and I'll show you. So basically just get your knife, run the skin off. And I don't know if you've ever had uh, tuna tartare. There's absolutely no reason you can't have salmon tartare. They serve raw salmon in the sushi bars all over America. And this is just a nice little treat. And all you do is very simple. Well, oh, these look beautiful already. Look at that. So here, real quick, I almost forgot what I like to flavor this with. I take some fresh thyme and I throw the whole sprigs right inside the pan. And later on, we can garnish it and I'll show you how to get the leaves off of this. And also, I've got some garlic here. And I just kind of give it a little mash in my hand and pull one off. And I don't want to peel it. What I want to do is just have the skin on there and maybe give it a little squish. Just like that. Just enough to release the oil and that goes right in the pan. It's a very, very European way of, of cooking the fish. It's going to flavor the oil. The fish is in the oil, flavors the fish. And then on the salmon tartare, look, you just give it a quick little run through with your knife, right? Now you get some good bread, sourdough, French bread, Italian bread. Okay, do that. We can put that right back in there because there's only raw fish in there, right? A little drop of olive oil. And let me grab a silver spoon over there somewhere and I'll show you how to mix this up. Fresh black pepper. And if we want, we can take some of our thyme sprigs here and we can just go down and pick some beautiful thyme leaves. If you go in reverse like this, they come off much easier. But if you went to a nice restaurant, you'd pay quite a bit of pennies for basically something that's left over, right? Big ones would pull them out. Okay, and that's it. And what we'll do is so we grab a spoon and you mix this up with the salt. If you want to hit it with a little bit of lemon, sometimes I'll put a splash of good white wine in there and just let it sit in the olive oil with the fresh thyme or if you have basil or mint, it goes actually really well. And we just let that sit. Later on, we'll put that on toast points. Be a great little starter to this amazing dinner. Now you can see the salmon is not stuck, which is a good thing. And let's see how crispy we're getting here. Skin is almost beautifully crisp. When this comes out of the pan, this is actually gonna be just like glass. If you get a little curl up, fix it. Okay, now I can season it, right? And be liberal with the seasoning. Also, pepper. Now, I can finish cooking these on the stovetop. I can take a few minutes, pop them in the oven. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop them in our oven, and we come back, we're gonna plate up this amazing dish, okay? Welcome back, everybody. Chef David here from the New Wave Cooking Club. Let's put the finishing touches on an amazing crispy skin roasted salmon with our Mediterranean couscous. So I've got the salmon in the oven. You could finish it on top of, the, on top of your PIC in your pan. I finished mine in the oven in the, in the interest of saving some time. So, and also to show you that this amazing cookware that we're making, this forged uh, cookware with the door line coating, actually goes right in the oven. It's amazing. Look at this. This is the hallmark of a restaurant pan. It's got to be able to go in the oven. You bring by all the fancy pans that you want to my restaurant. If you can't go in the oven, we don't buy it. So you can see the garlic is wilted a little bit, and the fresh thyme has brought all that flavor out into the oil, which is all now with the salmon. So now let's talk about couscous. So get a little glass bowl. Now again, this was on warm on the PIC, which helps a lot. The turmeric brought some serious color and some flavor. Carrots, nice texture, the peppers, and the shallot sweetness. This is what I was talking about, making the grains or igron air, or some recipes just tell you to fluff it. So look, very gently, pull these grains off like that. And you just basically are shaving them. See how that's going, guys? If I dug my, my spoon in there and pulled it out, I have a big clump of, of cooked pasta, and that's not what you want with, with couscous. And I'm sure I'm going to get a whole bunch of cute emails from my friends from Morocco uh, talking about tagine. We've had those conversations before and I love them. Uh, but there's actually these beautiful, incredible clay pots uh, in Northern Africa, in Morocco called couscousiers. And you cook the couscous 
and wonderful food right in there. I wish we had one. I would show it to you. We may make one to fit on the induction top. would be brilliant, wouldn't it? All right, so that's enough to get our dish going here. So put the lid on that. Now, I give this a quick fluff. You can see the steam is beautifully warm. If you want, you can flavor it up a little bit more with some olive oil. And the reason I do this is when I put the extra virgin olive oil in the pan, the pan gets hot. The olive oil gets hot. It loses some of its flavor. Extra virgin olive oil is designed really for eating raw or uncooked, not heated up frying stuff. I cook with it because it's healthy, but when I want to finish a dish, I always give a little touch of this. It brings a real floral aroma to the dish. And also, because it's been sitting a minute, I'm going to wake this up a little bit with some black pepper, pinch of salt. It's good sea salt there, by the way. And you can see the lightness of this. Now, also, if I wanted to grab a little, some fresh herb here, parsley to stems, chickens, we know that story, or into the compost. And look, just give a quick, rough chop. When you chop parsley, it doesn't have to be uh, micro fine. I see some chefs whacking away at their parsley like maniacs. That's not really how it's done. Certainly not how it's done in Italy. I think some places in Europe, they do that way, but it's an herb. It's a very flavorful herb. So it does not have to be micro chopped and then squeeze in a rag and all, you don't need any of that, all right? That's silly. Look, parsley gives two things, color and a little bit of this amazing uh, herbal chlorophyll style of countenance to it. So you can see that kind of changes the whole direction of the dish. Watch how easy this plate up is. Goes around right here, how about, a, how about a bigger spoon, chef? Here we go, okay? I make a nice mound right in the center. This isn't supposed to be super pretty. This is supposed to be super happy, making my guests happy. And then, beautiful, beautiful crispy piece of salmon. Look at that, guys. It's like glass. This goes right on the top. Okay, you with me so far? Good. Now, the garlic, remember this one? Look how easy this peels, because now this is actually roasted garlic. If you've had roasted garlic, it's amazing. So here's one of Dave's tricks. I take this. Remove this, and I'm just gonna smash this to a little paste, right? With a little salt on it. Remember, this has already been roasted, so this tastes like roasted garlic. Okay, and just a blade of my knife, I make me a little roasted garlic puree. I don't care if it's got parsley in there, that's more the better. So now what I do with this, make myself a little blob right on the top, okay? There's a lot of flavor there, guys. Olive oil, extra virgin, tastes good, it's good for you. Nice little drizzle around the plate like all the fancy chefs do. A little extra crack of pepper for color and brightness. And this is crispy skinned Atlantic salmon, Mediterranean couscous, our forged copper cookware, our induction cooktops if you're using them at home, fantastic. Send us an email, let me know, even better, send me a photo.